Uh, <coughs> thank you, President Officer. And can I, uh, like others, congratulate uh, Kenny Gibson on a very thoughtful uh, contribution uh, and also promoting the, the good work uh, of the Dogs Trust. And indeed, I visited my own uh, local Dogs Trust in the Glasgow East uh, area of my constituency, uh, outside my constituency, and indeed arranged for my own dog, Buster, to be uh, microchipped at the same, uh, same time as that visit. I think, as Dennis uh, Rogers said, that very clearly uh, the issue of microchipping, as far as I'm concerned, is a pretty straightforward debate. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, microchipping in itself uh, would actually ensure that the owners actually take responsibility uh, for their pets. It ensures that the owners consider more seriously the role that they should play in responsible dog ownership. So the very uh, essence and the very act of taking a dog to be microchipped uh, and also for the same time uh, promoting uh, responsible dog ownership and the role that the Dogs Trust plays in itself, uh, I think would assist uh, in that process mm -hmm. of promoting uh, responsible dog ownership. Uh, you know, as the last speaker today, I am aware of the fact that almost every, I think every speaker has advised that they are opposed uh, to the possibility of muzzling uh, all dogs in public places. Uh, what I would ask members to consider uh, is ensuring that the Parliament is given the opportunity to interrogate the possibilities uh, and the examples that exist in other parts uh, of the world, including uh, more closely uh, the Northern Ireland, the, the, the Republic of Ireland example, where compulsory muzzling is in place for dogs of a certain physical attribute. Uh, I say that from my own experience in dealing with uh, Brogan McQuaig, who many members, and you recall in the previous members' debate that I brought to Parliament, eight-year-old uh, Brogan, who was attacked by two uh, American uh, bull terriers. And even since uh, October last year, uh, Brogan continues to go through the rehabilita rehabilitation process uh, of what was a very vicious attack in Brogan, uh, and was set out uh, earlier uh, uh, by a number of members. There have been other examples of more serious attacks, uh, as was the case uh, of Kelly Lynch, who was attacked, as was previously uh, referred to, by two uh, Rottweilers. So these are very serious attacks that have taken place. I think it would be wrong for the Chamber to simply rule out the possibility of muzzling without us being given the opportunity to take evidence uh, for the parliamentary committee process, uh, to take evidence from the various uh, experts in this particular field, and for us to consider the other options that should be considered at the same time, and also to consider the very good work that's already in place. And I would pay special mention to uh, the Alexandria uh, Dog Care Management Centre, whose whole emphasis is ensuring uh, and dealing with the issue of ensuring that we have responsible dog owners in the first place prior to people taking ownership of the dog. Uh, and the very emphasis of that project is to ensure the owners are trained to be owners uh, and the whole emphasis is not purely placed on the issue of responsible uh, dogs. And I think this is the very challenge that faces the Parliament, uh, is ensuring that we take all the evidence that's available to us, uh, including muzzling, including the good examples of the good work that's already in place in Alexandria. Uh, and, of course, taking into consideration, I think as Malcolm Chisholm set out earlier, some of the horrific examples that are in place and recognising that we don't have all of the answers uh, to taking this issue forward, but I think it would be wrong of us to completely uh, discount any option without taking evidence on it in the first place. Uh, thank you very much, President Officer. Thank you.